Hi folks, Jason Webster here. Welcome to this episode of Inside PTI. Hey, today I thought we'd spend a little time talking about soybean planting dates from the PTI farm. You know, there's, there's a big buzz in the industry about planting soybeans early. We've been talking about this for quite some time. Is it true? Do we need to plant soybeans early if we're going to optimize or maximize soybean yields? Well, we've gone back and we've looked at some of the top management practices in soybeans that we've done at the PTI farm over the last seven years that we've been here at the farm. And, and we found that early planting of soybeans is our number two top return on investment management practice that we're doing here at the PTI farm. And, and it's equated to some pretty large dollar values. Uh, we're coming in with net profits over $135 an acre. So it shows you the power of what early planting soybeans can do for us. So, so why is this? Well, why do we need to plant soybeans earlier? Well, the PTI farm in Pontiac, Illinois, um, we don't have a long enough growing season. And we, we would like to extend the growing season to offer us some higher yield ability. So what we're going to do to, to cheat the system, if you will, is to try to plant earlier. And so it, it, every year we get into our soybean planting date studies. This is data from 2018 to 2024. And what we found is that the second week of April is actually offering us, on average, the highest yields here at the PTI farm. Now, we try to get in as early as we can. We try to get in in March and we try to develop that bell curve of what is too early, what is kind of the sweet spot, and then what is that law of diminishing uh, returns. But I think we've developed a pretty good bell curve here. And, and again, second week of April is giving us our highest yield of soybeans. As we get to uh, the first, um, really to the first of May, yields are diminishing. Um, every day, we can't plant soybeans. And, and so I, I think this is some really interesting data, especially as we look at average planting dates traditionally, at least in this area, is probably that first week of May. So a lot of growers will come to us and say, well, Jason, I don't know how early I can plant soybeans. Uh, March is, is, is one thing, but I mean, really realistically, what can we look at for planting soybeans at an earlier date? And I tried to put things into perspective based off of our data here from the PTI farm, going from that first half of May plantings of traditional soybean dates, uh, planting dates, and just saying, let's compare it to trying to plant soybeans the last half of April, okay? And what we found is that there's 11.8 bushel yield increase on the table waiting for us. Again, if we could push those soybean planting dates earlier in that last half of April. Now, we've got planting dates in March and a lot of, a lot of growers would say, gosh, that's awful early. I don't know if I can plant in March. I'm not saying that March has given us the best yield results, but I will say that, or at least the highest yield results, but I'll say this, our March planting dates have given us higher yields than our average first half of May planting date. So as I look at risk and reward, if we find a window early in the spring where it's fit and we can plant, I, I, I don't hesitate much given the yield increase or potential here, we're going to try to go after this. Some people say, well, how many times have you been able to plant in March at the PTI farm? This is a, a tweet that I, I recently put out. Uh, this is us planting soybeans here this year on March 14th here at the PTI farm. We had some warm weather and, and we have been fairly dry really from last fall throughout the winter and even up till now. But we had really good conditions on March 14th. So we went in and planted beans and I went back and looked uh, for uh, historical value. Well, this would be our eighth spring planting season here at PTI. Of the eight um, planting or spring plantings we've had at PTI, we've been able to make a March planting in six of the eight years here at the PTI farm. And again, why are we doing this? Well, we're trying to increase that growing season, lengthen that growing season to give us opportunity to maximize soybean yields. Now, some may say, well, what about crop insurance, Jason? Um, I've got crop insurance dates, and if I plant before my crop insurance date, I won't be eligible for crop insurance. 
and I, I hope people understand this. Um, if, if you plant before your crop insurance date on soybeans, and you can see on the map here, uh, in a lot of states, uh, you know, it shows, at least in Illinois, we're uh, April 5, April 10, April 15th planting date. If you would plant like I did on March 14th, is your crop insurance uh, null and void for the whole season? No, that is not the case. That's not what we're saying. You, you're going to have an issue with your replant insurance as part of your policy. You may not be eligible for that, but the rest of your crop insurance policy will be fully intact and you'll be fine. It's only the replant uh, policy that could be affected. Now, what's the next thing I'm going to worry about with planting soybeans early? Well, it's frost. A lot of growers will come to us and say, gosh, Jason, a lot of mornings out there, we can, we can see a little bit of frost. What's that going to do to my soybeans? What's the risk potential if I'm planting soybeans early? This is a picture of some frost we've had on some soybeans. We haven't had a huge issue with frost, but uh, the threat has been there in, in, on a lot of these beans that we have planted early, especially the ones in March. It's always kind of an uneasy feeling when you're watching the evening news and the weatherman comes in and, and says, hey, we've got a frost advisory this week. And if you've got plants outside, you may want to cover your plants so they don't get nipped by the frost. And, and, and when we hear this on the news, we take this quite literally and, and we've gone out and we've covered our plants. In this case, it's our soybeans that we planted early. This is, again, we've done this numerous years where there's a risk of frost and, and frost. And, I, and if I'm going to get frosted, I guess that's one thing. But I, in my mind, I'd kind of like to know, okay, on that early planting date that did get frosted off, what, what is the yield that I would have had from it? So in, in order to realize that, we go out and we cover the beans up to protect them. And, and this, is to, this has been totally recreational in the past. Uh, we've had very little problems with frost. Most times when we cover them, uh, it's just a waste of time. Those beans um, on the outside of the cover have never, never had frost damage at all. One of the other things we noticed with, with potential frost damage is tillage was really interesting to see, especially that year of 2021 with the Mother's Day Massacre Frost. It was really interesting to see the tillage method we were using and, and really looking at how much frost damage we had as a result of that tillage. Now, we're using primary tillage, you know, running a disc ripper in the, in the fall, then we work her one, down one time, um, but that, that's all is black, okay? Then we start reducing our tillage. We go to strip till. We leave all that residue in the center of the row. We reduce even more going to vertical tillage. We got corn stalks everywhere. And then we've got zero tillage. We run no till. But it was really interesting looking at frost damage in these four different tillage programs. Let's take conventional tillage, making her black. We had very minimal frost damage at all in our conventional tillage situations. And why, why is that? Well, you know, we created a, 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 a situation where all that soil was worked up and it's just black soil. And what happens is during the daytime hours when the sun shine in, that sun will shine down on that black soil and it'll warm it up. It's called thermal radiation. We've got more black soil exposed and so we're gonna warm the soil up more. And so when you do this, this can help protect and form somewhat of a barrier against frost because the soils are warmer. Now, it depends how cold you're going to get. If we get just a killing frost, it's not going to matter what tillage program you have. All the beans are going to get, get frosted off. But in a lot of situations where we say there's a nip in frost, if you've got some black soil here where the beans are planted, you can, you know, that'll help get you by with that thermal radiation. Strip till, look at that. We've really got conventional tillage over the row where the beans are planted, but then we've got the high amount of residue in the center of the row. But that black soil is one of the benefits of, of us running strip till here at this farm is having that black soil to warm up quickly where we can go in and plant earlier. But we've always said that that warmer soil can, can help in the case of a nip and frost. However, we get to the reduced tillage uh, practices. And this is where we got into trouble in 2021. By far, our vertical till and our no-till was, was, was the worst frost damage that we had. We had colder soils. We didn't have as much solar radiation or solar you know, warming of that soil. And consequently, we had higher frost damage. And when we go and we look at the yields, 
You know, the conventional tillage beans were running 84 bushel to the acre. These are dry land beans, a pretty good yield on beans. And as we looked at the other tillage programs, yield fell down in every situation, no-till being the worst, taking those, those yields down to 46.2 bushel, again, compared to the conventional tillage at 84. So that was really interesting to look at uh, in regard to tillage and frost damage. So in summary, yes, planting soybeans has its risks. As we look at the risk reward and everything that we do here at the farm, you know, going back over multi-year, you know, looking at management practices for soybeans, planting early has been our, our, our second best management practice that we can do to maximize soybean yields. So in summary, if we get a window and soils are fit and we can get in and plant soybeans, we feel that Yes, there's a risk there, but we feel the reward is going to be higher. We're going to go in, we're going to take that risk because we know that over time at the PTI farm, it's proven to be one of the top management practices for us to maximize soybean yields. <music>